In 1889, Congress ratified an agreement with the Indians which allotted nearly two million acres of land for homesteading. The Oklahoma land rush was the biggest stampede in history. 50,000 settlers made the run to file on claims. At their heels came outlaws, bringing with them a wave of crime and violence. sprang up overnight. Tough, hard settlements where the term law and order was but mockery. Such a town was red dust. Take Jack the doctor. And you can take care of the undertaker. That's all, boys. Well, Jack was only wing, but Bill doesn't work before us anymore. That's the fourth gunfight this week. I'd almost be glad to see a sheriff around here myself. Might be a good idea. Say, Nick. I'm expecting Ben Jode on today's stage. So business is going to pick up again, huh? Usually does when he's around. I'll be in the office. Tell him where I am when he shows sure. up. Sure. And get a hold of that land office, Agent Parker. I want Jode to meet him. Okay, Fred. find Clyde Flint. Right down the street. Clyde owns the saloon. Thank you. Thank you. You can put my bags in the hotel. Yes, sir. Come in. Hello, Clyde. Why, hello, Ben. Glad to see you. Sit down. Make yourself at home. Yeah, when I wrote you to set up the headquarters in Red Dust, I didn't expect anything like this. Well, why not? I picked this up for a song. It's a perfect front. How'd you do in the East? Great. I hit the jackpot. This is going to be the big cleanup you and I have been talking about. You mean there won't be any hitch in opening the Cherokee Strip? Not a chance. President Cleveland's proclamation will be issued any day now, and the claims will be filed through the Red Dust Land Office, just like I figured. That's what Parker's been telling me. Who's Parker? The land agent here. Can we get to him? I've already got to him. He likes to play roulette. He now owes me $6,500. <laughs> so he's been bucking that crooked wheel of yours, huh? Oh, Ben. Let's say out of bounds. Sounds much nicer. We'll see that you keep Parker out of balance. That's probably Parker now. Look, we can talk in front of him. He knows we got a deal in. Come in! Shake hands with Trent Parker. This is Ben Jode. How do you do, Mr. Jode? Uh, glad to know you, Parker. Clyde has said some mighty fine things about you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Clyde and I get along fine. I'll say we do. Parker? On Clyde's recommendation, I'm going to let you in on one of the biggest business deals we've had together. Well, I'm in favor of big deals. This is about the opening of the Cherokee Strip, isn't it? Yes, it involves the Strip. This is the proposition. Red dust is right here. Approximately here is Town Site 20. That's what we want and that's what we've got to control. It'll cost a lot of money to buy that Town Site from the settlers, Mr. Jode. We're not going to buy the town site, Parker. We're going to win it in the run. But suppose some other settlers file on at first. 
With your able assistance, we can invalidate those claims. Sit down, I want to show you something. Why, that's a land record book, isn't it? Yes. It's an exact duplicate of the books you will use in the land office for registering claims. In this book, you will register all the land in Town Site 20 to my men. I'll give you a list of their names later. What happens when the legitimate settlers come in to file on that land? You file their claims in your own original book. When all the lots in Town Site 20 have been taken up, you substitute this book. Then your men will control Town Site 20. That's right. This duplicate record book will substantiate their claims. Why, well, that's wholesale claim jumping. We'll dispense with that term, Parker. I prefer to call it land promotion. But where's the money for us in all this? All we have is a doubtful claim on prairie land that may someday be a town. No, we don't care if it never becomes a town. The money comes from my connections in the East. The Great Eastern Finance Company, to be exact. Oh, that is a big company. The Great Eastern will loan my Pioneer Development and Trust Company sufficient funds to construct a modern settlement on Town Site 20. Where's their securities? The land claims recorded in your record book to our men. Exactly. Those claims will act as collateral for the loans which we'll divide. Then the town will never be built. Not unless somebody else built it. <laughs> well, it's big all right, and it's dangerous. All big operations are dangerous, Parker, in one way or another. It's also dangerous for a government employee to lose $6,500 at roulette. I'm worried about that, Clyde. You needn't be. That is, if you like Joe's plan. I'm sure Clyde is willing to write off the 6500 as a retainer. It'll be much more than that. All right. I'll go for it, Mr. Jode. As soon as you give me the names of the men you want to file on that town site, I'll prepare the duplicate record book. You won't regret it, Parker. But remember, there will be some resentment when the settlers find my men claiming their land. Just be firm. If you run into any real trouble, we'll protect you. Don't worry about me, Mr. Jones. Glad you're with us, Trent. Sure. We'll be seeing a lot of each other. Take that when we get to the new town site. June has all the fun. Why didn't you let me ride in the race with her? Well, you're too young, honey.
Let us settle down now. That was quite a run. What started it? All I did was this. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Whoa. What? Tony, put that gun down before you kill somebody. Thanks, mister. My name is Chad Stevens. I'm from Topeka. I'm glad to know you, Chad. My name is William Hardy. And this is my daughter, Midge. How do you do, Midge? Hello, Mr. Chad. Say, that runaway was a mighty costly one if you figured on staking a claim. Well, no. My other daughter, June, is making the run with a fast horse. Midge and I were just bringing up the household things. I see. Say, I'm a little confused. What direction would I take to get to town site 20? Well, the main body of the Cherokee Strip lies over yonder. I imagine that's where you'll find it. Daddy, Daddy, look! Everything bounced out of the way. What? Oh, now we'll have to go back and pick them all up. I'll help you, Mr. Hardy. Well, thanks, Chad. That is, if we don't delay you. No, I was just riding through the strip to see the excitement. Get in. I guess we found about everything. Yep. Well, wait a minute, there's a kettle over there. Your accident was lucky after all, Mr. Hardy. Look at that. Section 3, N.W., Township 43. What does that mean? Well, it's a section marker put here when they surveyed the territory for the land run. Oh, I see. Now all you have to do is file on your claim at the Red Dust Land Office. This farmland isn't of any use to me. You see, I'm counting on my daughter June getting me a business lot in Town Site 20. Better hold on to the bird in your hand, Mr. Hardy. Now, that's a good idea, but I have to let June know where I am. You stay right here and pitch her cap on this section. I'll look for your daughter in Red Dust and give her a message for you. If it won't put you out any, or you won't have any trouble recognizing her, June is just 20, and about as pretty a girl as you'll find this side of Boston, even if she is my own daughter. <laughs> I'll find her. are getting pretty hot under the collar. I hope Parker can stand up under it. I think he will. Money means an awful lot to him. It must. I wouldn't like to be in that land office right now. I tell you, Parker, I filed my claim according to regulation. This Matt Johnson's a claim jumper. You say you filed a claim. But I have no record of it in my book, Mr. Green. There it is in black and white. The lot that you say is yours is recorded by Mr. Matt Johnson. Then this record book don't tell the truth. Are you accusing me of being crooked? Uh, let me handle this matter, my friend. I am a lawyer. Yes, sir. I will get out a writ of habeas corpus. I will nully contender that man Johnson. I'll handle my business my way. Oh, as you wish, my friend, as you wish. Good morning, Your Honor. Your Honor, some scurrious, low-down thief has jumped my lot claim. Now, Your Honor, I wish to have him duly evicted in order, Your Honor, that I may take possession considering the due residue or is a due residence. That, Your Honor, is inconsequential. This lot claim was registered and recorded under the name of Don Quixote Martingale Esquire. That, Your Honor, is me. Ipso for short. Legal terminology for ipso facto. Because I am a lawyer. I am not interested in your pet names. Read off your claim identification numbers. Yes, Your Honor. Lot 31, Southwest, Town Site 20. That lot uh, has already been recorded to... Uh... Mr. Dick Walters. I object. That is inconsequential. That is irrelevant. As a matter of fact, that ain't so. You know that I filed on that claim this morning. The only evidence I have is my record book. Lot 31, Southwest, Town Site 20, signed Dick Walters. My name is June Hardy. 
I believe my lot was right next to yours. Oh, I'm glad to know you, ma'am. What is your claim identification number? Lot number 33, Southwest, Townsite 20. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Hardy. That lot has already been recorded by Mr. Jake Lippert. But you must remember me. I was here this morning. I never forget a pretty face like yours. But I don't remember ever seeing you before. Hey, by golly, that fella Green was right. Now, there is something crooked going on around here. If there is, you settlers are behind it. Some of you who were disappointed in sticking claims could have gotten together and framed a hoax. How dare you show contempt for the Vox Populace? Why, it's uh, uh, disethical. In fact, we didn't do no such thing. We're not getting anywhere arguing. Let's go and see what the rest of the settlers intend doing. Yeah, and be pluribus unum to you, my friend. Well, are you men going to stand by and be robbed? Oh. Those settlers aren't going to be easy to handle. Oh, yes, they are. They're playing right into our hands. Parker's done his part. Now it's up to us to do ours. Are the boys ready? They have been for the last hour. Good. I'll slip into the land office through the back door and start things moving. Most of us have put everything we've owned into making this run. It's a Cherokee strip for us or bust. I say let's get that record book. We're going to get our claims back. Hey, now, just a minute, boys. What you propose doing is illegal. Men, why don't you let me handle your cases for you? Why, I'll take them to the Supreme Court. Yes, sir, I'll even take them higher than that. Well, that kind of fighting won't do no good. We want action. And we want those claim jumpers run out of the country. Yes, sir. Say, Miss Hardy, we oughtn't to be a party to this. No, it's malfeasance in office. Uh, or something. I don't care what it is. We've been swindled, and I feel the same way they do about it. Don't let those wagon trams frighten you, Parker. We're prepared for that. I'm glad you're here, Mr. Joad. The situation's beyond me. I don't know how to handle it. I do. You've got half a leader in that man, Green, but I know how to take care of his kind. Uh, oh, we've had enough talk. Let's go! Let's go! and put this wounded man in the wagon. June Hardy? Yes. Who are you? Chance Stevens is my name. Your father asked me to look you up here in town. What's this all about? Our claims have been jumped, and we settlers are not going to take it lying down. Well, getting killed in a gunfight framed against you isn't going to save your claims. Whose covered wagon is this? It's mine. Well, hop in it and get out of town. Do your fighting later when you're organized. Then you'll have a chance. That makes sense. Sure. Your father has staked a homestead in Township 43, just north of here. Get out there and take the settlers with you. I'll cover you. Hey, come on. Come on, Chatter! Hurry! Follow that wagon! Get in your wagons, men, and get out of town! Step on it!
You all agree that there's something crooked in that Red Dust land office. I think you're right. But you people have put too much into this run to give up now. Well, I guess we all feel that way. But it looks like we've been whipped out. Well, I was brought up to believe that America's a free country. Sometimes we have to fight to protect that freedom. By working together, there's still a chance that you people can get your claims. Joe, I like the way he talks. And so do I. You'll get plenty of support if you can show us a good plan. My plan's a very simple one, Mr. Green. The first thing you have to have is a place to live. My father can give you that. You bet I can and will. You know, folks, my colleague here, Mr. Stevens, is proceeding along the right path. Or is it road? Oh, well, don't make no difference. And furthermore, I'm going to take this case to the United States Supreme Court. Yes, sir, and even higher. <laughs> Mr. Hardy, I'd advise you to go into red dust and file on this claim immediately. Protect your rights from every angle. Mr. Stevens is right, Dad. Yes, sir, Mr. Stevens is right. And you, Miss Hardy, are also right. This land must be protected and will be protected, even if I have to resort to habeas corpuses. <laughs> I'll ride into Red Dust and see if I can pick up some information. If you need me, you can find me in the Lucky Chance Saloon. All right, folks. Let's get unpacked and start making camp. That's a good idea. Let's get going. Fresh money in this game? We sure can. Money at this table is getting worn out, being passed back and forth. Whites are a dollar, scale up to ten for the blues. How much do you want? Give me a hundred dollars worth. Boy, pay your attention. As candidate for sheriff, I want all my friends to enjoy the hospitality of the house. And we'll see that you are the next sheriff, Clyde. Set him up! That's all. Now that section is legally yours. Huh? Uh, do you mean that we're not going to have any more trouble? Trouble? Why, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I don't. Just the other day. Uh, it was a lovely day the other day. Oh, look. They're going to have a county election next month. That's right. Hey! Oh, 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 say, Hardy. Why, why, that's one of the fellows that was doing all the shooting at us. We can't let a man like that get into office. Uh, we've got to register right now. I can register you, Mr. Hardy, and members of your family. But you, Martin Gale, are not a legal resident of the county and cannot vote. And why not, I should like to know, my dear sir. I am residing on the Hardy claim, along with 50 others. You are merely a guest of Mr. Hardy, and that does not establish legal residence. I can register you now, if you wish. Sign there. Say, I resent this. I resent this. This is an infringement on my constitutional right not to permit me to vote in this election. Well, Mr. Parker just explained that you're not a legal resident in the voting district. But if we ever do get this claim jumping straightened out, you'll be entitled to a vote. Yes, but Hardy, by that time, the election will be over with. Say, Hardy, do you know something? Oh, don't answer. I know you do. But you see that fellow Flint? Well, now, I think he's behind all this claim jumping. Yes, I do. And I'm going out and tell the people so. The people, my friend. Vox Populus, my friend. And you're one of them. Come on, Hardy. Come on. And boys, I want you all to understand that after I'm elected, I'll work hand in glove with Mr. Parker of the Federal Land Office, who has so generously given me his support. And between the two of us, we will see that your new property rights are protected. Well, I only hope that you men here in Red Dust will avail yourselves of the opportunities that are going to be offered in Town Site 20. My good friend Ben Jode is prepared to finance a building of a town there that will be a monument to the Cherokee Strip. Well. Here he is, boys. Uh, hey. 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 I hope I can measure up to all the things Clyde has said of me. As a matter of fact, I've just received some advice from my eastern bankers, which I'd like to discuss with Clyde personally. If you gentlemen will excuse us. Another one on me, boys. <laughs> Oh, 
see that fellow with his back to us in the poker game over there? Yeah. Isn't he the one that was so handy with the gun when the settlers blew up on Parker? Yeah, that's him. Well, get in the game. You might learn something. That's not a bad idea. Time for a rest, Nick. I'll take over. Hey, listen here. I got something to say to you, Mr. Candidate. Yes, sir, and to everybody else in this place that's going to vote for this crook here. Who are you calling a crook? I'm calling you a crook because I think you're involved in this claim jumping. Yes, sir, and that you're just trying to be elected sheriff so that you can protect your own land thieves. Take it easy, Flint. certainly take your election seriously, don't you? I most certainly do. That, my friend, is an American citizen's unalienable right. <laughs> well, come on out to the camp and you can make an election speech. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hardy, let's go. Well, this new county won't be fit for decent folks to live in if Flint and these outlaws run it. Why don't we pull up stakes and move on somewhere else? We might as well. We'll never get those lots back in town side 20. No. Oh, whoa, no. now wait just a minute, folks. Let's not make any hasty decisions. No, sir. We have got to deliberate these things deliberately. Why? You remember the old proverb? It's an ill wind that gathers no moss. How's that again, Epso? Hmm? Oh, I just was saying that it's an ill wind. Now, I'll explain this to you in another way. Maybe we're not half as bad off as we think we are. We couldn't be worse off. Why, the men folks haven't even got a vote. Yeah. Oh, well, now, if we can prove our cases against those claim jumpers, then they will be the illegal residents. In the meantime, Flint would be running the new county as sheriff. If there was only some way these folks could establish legal residence. Oh, yes, but there isn't. Mm -mm. I've just wrecked, or at least I've racked my brains to try and think of something. Uh, I've even read one of my own law books. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an idea that might work. Well, let's have it, Chad. Mr. Hardy has a legal claim on this section. That's 640 acres, a square mile. You men should be able to build quite a town on that. Well, what do you mean? Well, if Mr. Hardy is willing, he can sell you lots on the section. Then build your own town on a cooperative basis. Why, of course I'm willing. Are you sure all this is legal? I'm gambling that it is. Come on, Mr. Hardy, let's head for the land office. Oh, say, wait just a minute, Hardy. Say, Chad, uh, just speaking ex officio, but don't you think I'd better go along just to, well, sort of modus the operandi? Pro tem, so to speak. Oh, pro tem. <laughs> the man's a legal genius. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this might be a solution to our troubles. That's what I'm sure. Yeah, I think. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Hardy, but I'm afraid what you settlers propose to do is not legal. Well, doesn't Section 541 of the Land Act cover a situation just like this? 541? Oh, yes. I'd uh, forgotten about that. I'll check it. Uh, excuse me. You seem to know a lot about your land laws. <laughs> a wandering cowboy picks up a lot of information. Most of it's worthless. <laughs> and then they say that a rolling stone gets... Yep, Solomon. Hmm? Don't start that again, please. Oh, no. 
<laughs> this cowboy certainly knows his land laws. Under Section 541, they can petition the Washington office. Will Washington grant the petition? I'm afraid so. The government's anxious to get this territory settled. Have you got the petition forms? Yes, I have. We'll have to give them out or they'll become suspicious. But stall Hardy until I can get around to the front office. Right. That explains the whole procedure, Mr. Hardy. We carefully get the correct names and former addresses of the petition. How are you, Parker? How are you, Mr. Jode? Uh, Mr. Jode, this is Mr. Hardy, Mr. Martingale, and Mr. Stevens. Gentlemen, you might be interested to know that they are applying for a petition to establish a town site on Mr. Hardy's claim. Oh, really? Naturally, I'm interested. Why is that, Mr. Jode? Because I'm deeply involved in financing Town Site 20. You'll be my competitors. Uh, by the way, may I ask how you propose to finance this new development? Well, we haven't given that a thought yet. Perhaps you'd be interested in financing us too, Mr. Jode. No, I don't think so, Mr. Stevens. However, I will make you a good proposition. I'll give you $10 an acre better than top price for that section of yours in 43. Well, I couldn't take that, Mr. Jode. I'll throw in a corner business lot right here in Red Dust. Well, I couldn't do it. That would be selling out the rest of the settlers. That is some good business, Mr. Hardy. Let the other settlers take care of themselves. And perhaps Mr. Hardy has a code that he'd like to live up to. I'm talking business with Mr. Hardy, my friend. Call me Stevens. I couldn't choose my name, but I can choose my friends. Come on, let's get out of here, Mr. Hardy. We'll get all the supplies and financing we need in Carterville. I don't like this, Joe. It isn't going the way we planned it. Don't be a pessimist. Those supplies will never get through. $1,000 bonus all the way around. If even the horses that outfit don't get through.
Well, how was I to know that Stevens and that Gabby lawyer were in the back of that wagon? It was a mistake to underestimate that cowpuncher Stevens. Well, you better do something about him. If you don't, the settlers are going to make a go of that town site. No, they won't. Not while we've got Parker. You better watch him, too. He's losing his nerve. Don't worry. I'll just use him to bring Hardy and that scarecrow lawyer into town. I'll handle the rest of it. around here. <laughs> Midge! Midge, you come here. Ah, you, you wait a minute. You give me that sleep shot. Come on. You, see, now listen here, young lady. Don't you know that it's unlawful, that it's a misdemeanor and mayhem to carry a weapon like that? I didn't know. Oh, they could just put you in jail and lock that big door and throw the key right away for an act of vandalism. I just missed it, so I didn't mean to hit you. Don't you ever do a thing like that. You disturb some awful important legal matters I got in my mind. Midge. You mustn't bother Mr. Martingale. Run along and play, dear. All right, you. Uh, say here, uh, did you know that, uh... Daddy's almost ready. Oh, my goodness, my, my briefcase. Here's your coat, Dad. Thanks, honey. Everything's going to be all right, isn't it? Oh, well, sure it is, Joan. Ipso and I just have to ride into Red Dust and sign some forms. I'm probably making a mountain out of a molehill. Well, don't worry. We'll be back soon. Yeah, goodbye, June. Bye, Daddy. What's the matter, June? Nothing, honey. Run along and play. Hi, Mitch. Mr. Chair! Mr. Chair, did you bring my surprise from Carterville? Oh, golly, I'm afraid I forgot it, Midge. Oh. Mr. Chair, you're teasing me. Well, um, as a matter of fact, I think I do have a package in my saddlebag. There you are. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chen. Now you have a real Western boyfriend. I'm not old enough. Well, you will be real soon. Say, so, uh, where's your sister? She's in the tent. Mary, Mary, look what Mr. Chen brought me. June. Hello, Chad. Hello, Joan. Were you successful at Cartersville? Yes. You know, they're very anxious to see this territory opened up. Is your father around? Why, no. He went into town with Ibso to sign some papers. Is that so? Well, what kind of papers were they? I don't know. He, something about some petitions. Mr. Parker asked them to come in. Was Parker out here? No. He wrote Dad a letter. Did you see the letter? Yes, I did. There is something wrong, isn't there, Chad? Well, I don't know. But just to make sure there isn't, I'm going to ride into Red Dust. Parker, you wanted to see me? No, oh, yes, just a moment. 
Mr. Joad wants you to sign this. Oh, wait just a minute. I object, sir. I insist that my client be given a chance to read this document before he attaches his signature to it. Uh, Hardy, never sign anything, especially a legal paper, unless you read it first. that I want you to sign that deed. Why, this is a deed to my section in Township 43. I'll not sign it. Oh, yes, you will. Well, you haven't got enough money to buy it, and you certainly can't threaten me into giving it away. You have two lovely daughters, Mr. Hardy. Does that land claim mean more to you than they do? What do you mean? I mean, if you don't sign that deed, you'll never see them again. Well, you couldn't do a thing like that. That isn't human. Protesting isn't going to alter the situation any, Hardy. Sign it. Parker, are you going to stand here and be a party to this? There's nothing I can do. Very well. I'll sign it. But remember, Joe, you haven't heard the last of this. No, Joe, not murder. Somebody's been shot. What happened? Mr. Hardy's been shot. Who shot him? That lawyer, Martin Gale. Why? They had an argument because Mr. Hardy sold me his claim. He sold you his claim? Yes, I feel rather guilty about it. Martin Gale became furious when Hardy signed the deed and shot him, claiming he was selling out the settlers. What happened to Martin Gale? I struck him with this weight, fearing he might turn on Parker and me. Oh! 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 What in the name of the Continental Congress has happened? You shot Mr. Hardy. Oh, ah, oh you're crazy. You've done enough harm with that already. Wait a minute. He's still alive. We better get him to a doctor right away. I'll go with you. Come on. A gun wound, Doctor. There's still a chance. Bring him in here. late to clean house now, Parker. Don't do that. I don't want to shoot you. Why, uh, why, what does this mean, Stevens? Hardy talked. He implicated you and Joad. But Joad shot him. I didn't even know he was going to. That still makes you an accessory. Uh, but I tell you, I didn't know anything about it. I'll admit that I helped Joad steal those claims, but that's all I did. How did you do it, Parker? If I tell you that, will you help me out of this shooting scrape? I'll make you no promises. Talk. All right, I'll tell you. We use a duplicate record book.
That's the original. I'm sorry. The man who brought Mr. Hardy's body here must have been laboring under great excitement. Mr. Hardy died the moment the bullet struck him. That's all we want to know. You know what to do with the murderer, don't you, Flint? Frontier justice is the only thing for him. Oh, well, no, I didn't do anything. Well, I didn't even know anything had happened. I... Here's your evidence. Oh, I didn't know what happened even. I didn't do anything. Now, I'm innocent, I tell you. Now, listen, you can't. Now, I object. I object. Hey, wait a minute. I'll be hanged if I'll let you do this. Now, I demand to see a lawyer. Take care of him, Clyde. I'll go over and quiet Parker's nerves. Now, this is the wrong modus operandi. Now, I object. I won't... That's how it was done, Stevens. What was your prize? Flynn canceled all my gambling debts. I was to get a thousand dollars for each one of those claims that I forged. Oh, I know I was wrong to let the settlers down, but I never shot anybody in my life. It's all right, Parker. Hardy's dead. It doesn't make any difference now, Jode. I just told Stevens the truth. Truth about what, Parker? About how you killed Hardy and try to pin it on Martingale. Well, I guess there isn't much more I can say now. Boys, I tell you, I'm innocent. Get on that horse. Oh, I wouldn't do a thing like that. I said mount that horse. Come on, get him up there. Okay, bring him over here. Pick up the slack and tie it off. excuse I want to let you have it. Drop that gun. Now we're going to square things for Martingale. Get moving. Let's go. Get away from that horse. Get going. Take the rope off that man's neck. Make it snappy. I've got the real murderer here. And just who are you to be given orders? An investigator for the United States Land Office. I've been trailing this man for three years. Now I've got him. For the murder of William Hardy. All right, boys. Turn that Gabby lawyer loose. Well, it looks like we almost made a mistake. Mr. Flint, your mistake was tying in with Ben Jode. I tell you, I'll take this case to the Supreme Court. Mm. Uh, even higher. <laughs> oh, thank you, my friend. That was one of the finest things I've ever had happen to me in my life. You'll never forget the <laughs> thing that all you've done for me.
Chad Stevens, you're a sight for sore eyes. Where have you been? Helping to prepare the evidence to be used at Joe's murder trial. Uh, say, you know, Chad, I had rather hoped that the prosecution would see fit to use my valuable services. Pro tem, of course. Oh, yes, pro tem. <laughs> Couldn't be any other way. Pro tem, uh, that means temporary, doesn't it? No, does it? He whiz, I always thought it meant a lot more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the district attorney will want to subpoena some of you folks as witnesses. And I told him to serve you at your new homes in Townside 20. And we owe those homes to you, Chad. <laughs> well, I'll just leave the last strings out and I'll come back sometime. Goodbye, Joan. Goodbye, Mitch. Bye. So long. You're welcome. Goodbye, Chad. Bye. Bye. Bye.